Um, so let me let me go back to my let me go back to my presentation. Here I am. Some additional features that you might be interested in. So, for example, stuff that we use in uh, quantum chemistry for calculating those properties of materials. You can use algorithms such as quantum phase estimation. This is a very famous one, and uh, we have some resources to learn about this. So if you are interested in chemistry, this is might be you know, a, a good one to learn, although it's a little bit hard. Maybe it's not so, so beginner level. We have some quantum data sets, which you know, made a, are having a huge success in the quantum community. And uh, here, here is a tiny video of how to use them. You go and look for the molecule that you want to simulate, and you can um, configure it to use the basis set that you need. Um, for chemists, this is important for people who know chemistry. For those of you who are not into chemistry, this will mean nothing, but that's okay. Um, and after you have configured it, you can choose the different attributes that you want to download. So um, if you want to download the Hamiltonian, for example, you can do that. Uh, you know, you probably know how in the classical world data sets were critical to improve usage and like uh, to improve the solutions, the solutions that, uh, you know, were made by people around the world who had now access to these amazing data sets. So, um, yeah, this is this is something that can be very useful if you're running uh, problems related to chemistry. Um, I see some questions. Uh, oh, Pascal, I tried 18 to 22 qubits on a given circuit. Show the difference between running on GPU versus CPU. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this I've, I've mentioned already. Um, in terms of resource estimation, this is something that is becoming increasingly important. It's if I want to run a specific algorithm, how many qubits, how many uh, gates will I need? So um, using the tracker or different resource estimation techniques can be useful for you. And logging as well, as, as you probably are aware, logging is very useful in order to uh, understand what is going on with your code. So we have a logging functionality as well. And the option to program circuits, not only at the level of gates, but at a lower level. So this is called pulse level programming. So uh, probably not something that you will do unless like you're doing some, you're more advanced on this. Um, but as you get more advanced, you know that, you know, this is something that you you could do with Penny Lane, but probably at your level, not, not necessary right now. You can research into advanced algorithms. So QSBT is one of the most popular algorithms and most advanced ones right now. Um, so generalization of some other algorithms can be seen as that. So definitely interested if you're more into the algorithm side, this is an advanced one. And uh, different gradient methods, etc. cetera. Um, some, uh, so a lot of our tools come from the research that we do. So we have, for example, these uh, SUN transformations. Uh, so this comes uh, specifically from, from research uh, that we do. Um, and integrations with different uh, third parties that I hadn't mentioned before. So there's one that um, is focused on natural, lambic, uh, natural language processing, and it's called Lambic. So we have an integration with them. If this is, if this is what you're doing, then we have an integration with that. And um, quantum dot based hardware, so other kinds of hardware as well. Linear combination of unitaries is a very, very hard problem that, um, you know, it's important for the field. So more tools related to that. Um, and this is more like specific and more advanced on quantum information. Um, probably not, uh, not, not super relevant for you at this point. And compilation, if somebody here is interested in compilation, please uh, reach out to me. I'll, I'll write my I'll write my email in the chat in case um, in case you need anything. Well, we'll have a QA next week, but you can have it handy in case uh, you wanna I'll talk about something else. So let me know that you were part of this training. 
Um, if you're interested in compilation, this is something that we're actively working on right now, a library called Catalyst. So you can uh, use it um, as QGIT, you usually import Catalyst. From Catalyst, you import QGIT, and then this can allow you to do a hybrid uh, quantum compilations. Now, one tool that I wanted to mention, uh, this is the one that allowed us to run this 100 qubit circuit last year. And uh, I, I don't know if we're still doing that today, but like this was a huge milestone to be able to run 100 qubits. And this was because of using these tools, so circuit cutting, uh, it's, it's kind of a way to um, break apart your, your circuit. Uh, in case it's very big, you sometimes run out of memory, you can use circuit cutting. Uh, it's just like adding one line of code and then you can sometimes uh, not have those memory issues. It kind of breaks your circuit apart into smaller pieces. And if you're interested in more, uh, more of the research that we do, it's it's available on on our website. We have a lot on quantum machine learning, uh, a lot on algorithms, um, optimal control, etc. Um, so we went through through the demo and a little bit overview of the more advanced ones, and we can go deeper into them if you want in the other session. But I would mostly like to get your questions. And uh, for me, the takeaway is uh, quantum computing really is is easy. You just need to learn the basics, and um, once you look at the math, it becomes it becomes easy. And the programming is designed um, to be welcoming. It doesn't require a lot. Um, it's really, you know, it, I think it was harder to uh, to get a container running than actually uh, running the penny lane code. Um, so next steps for you, um, please uh, go to the codebook, codebook.zanadu.ai. Let me note it down here. Anyway, everything is at pennylane.ai. You can find it under the learn section. You'll find the codebook. You can also go to our YouTube. We have one of Xanadu and one of Penny Lane. So Xanadu AI and at Penny Lane AI. So those are our YouTube channels. Now we have some challenges. If later on you feel like you want to try something, these are maybe a little bit hard for uh, for the moment for you. Um, same uh, for the tutorials that we have. So Penny Lane dot AI. Um, you you can find different demos. They are again a little bit more advanced, but you can of course um, you can take a look at them and use them. And finally, our um, career. So the residency program. You're gonna see a lot of advertising about it, but uh, it's mostly focused on students. So students who want to do a summer internship. If you're interested in careers and we do look for people with HPC expertise, this is a, an important thing for us. Uh, so if you do have that XPC expertise and um, you want to work at Xanadu, uh, take a look at our careers. Um, our yes, um, I think this is the, the the best place to go. If you're a student and are also interested in that, our residency is the right place. And uh, our these are many ways you can integrate with our community. You can join our newsletter, our Slack, post questions in our discussion forum. Uh, give us a star on GitHub. We're very close to 2,000 stars, so you might be the, uh, the one who gives us a star number 2,000. And uh, you can follow us on social media as well. And finally, the invitation I wanted to give is for our uh, largest hackathon of the year. It's called QHack. It happens in February, from February 8 to 22. So uh, definitely go to QHack.ai. Registration is open on December 5th. And um, that is the number three thing I wanted you to remember. It's qhack.ai. Uh, it's a place to keep learning, uh, to go and uh, have fun, etc. So
I hope I hope you enjoyed today. Oh, there's a question. What had been the largest circuit for QML? I don't know. I don't know what had been the, the largest circuit. I, I am not meaning to say that 100 is the largest circuit. It probably isn't. It's just, it's a very large circuit. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, Thanks very much. I've got to go. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And, Thanks a lot. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. I'll Thanks see you next very week. much, Catalina. Big round of uh, virtual applause. I'll leave the previous one in case somebody uh, wants to take a screenshot. And uh, yeah, I know there were some tech issues at the beginning, but um, I hope you can, you know, keep trying and ask some questions next time. And we hope to see you on Friday for the Q&A session. For the Q&A session. Is that, I, I think it's your Friday? Yes, it's, it's our Friday, Friday, your Thursday. My Thursday. Yes, my Thursday. All right. So as you're leaving, if you want to let me know um, uh, the slides, I think there was a recording. So maybe, I mean, you'll have it in the recording. Um, yes, we will have the recording and we'll let everyone know when that's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anybody who's there, uh, what to let me know if this was the right level, if it was too easy. Uh, let me know if this was too easy or too hard or just the right level for those who are still leaving or in the call. In the room, what, what do we think? Right level of complexity? Yeah, it was good um, for introduction when I haven't done anything. It was, it was very good, thank you. Okay, perfect. This seems like it was the right level. Yes, I think so as well. Do we still have access to the policy username and password? I think so, right? Yeah, you should be able to play with it for a little bit. So, uh, okay, okay. I think I, I, I was, do you remember with how long it's, it's up to Friday? I think we should be probably up to Friday, but I don't know. Up to Friday, okay. Okay, so if we need um, a long-term kind of access, um, this is way from UWA, um, yeah. how do we go about um, accessing or requesting them? So the allocation, the merit allocation schemes to access the policy support we've already passed for the policy partnership schemes and the uh, national compute schemes for like large allocations. So those are the, we, we basically grant million CPU hour allocations for projects um, that's uh -huh. already passed. There's preparatory access schemes that people can ask for to see how they might try. So I know lots of people in quantum computing might be still trying to play with it. They don't necessarily yeah. need to know the scale that they, they don't need to run on a hundred GPUs or more. No, not, that's, that's for sure. Not at this yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. So there's preparatory access schemes you can ask for. Uh, mm -hmm. basically you it kind of submit a ticket, we evaluate the, the access scheme and then we probably, you know, if it's quantum computing, we probably likely would grant it to try a few things. Um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then the following year, if you ever feel like you need really serious compute resources, mm -hmm. then, uh, you would pay attention. You would have to make sure that you look on and check to see when the schemes are open, usually yeah. Open yeah. a year. And mm -hmm. then you put in a, a request to say, I need 2 million hours because I want to run some quantum circuits that take I don't sure. know, 42, G, uh, 42 qubits. And that's a big, that's a big ask. Yeah. 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 That makes a lot of sense. Thanks a lot, Pascal. No problem. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave. Thanks so much for organizing this. I mean, this is really wonderful. I learned a lot today. Thank you. I'm glad. Cheers. Right. Bye. Bye, Catalina. Bye.
Thank you. It was very good. Thank you. Excellent. All right. We will go ahead and close the meeting. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you. Thank you.